Hey guys, Mike here, Adam Tutorials, and welcome back to a new video. Well, guys, um, uh, a short while ago, I did a video on uh, rigging characters. In that case, it was an arm with, uh, you know, elbow, wrist, hand, and so forth. Rigging that with parenting. So uh, the child-parent relationship, and that's pretty much the most basic form of rigging in a character, okay? In this video, we're going to take the next step and we're going to look at joints. All right. Now, in order to demonstrate that, we obviously need something to use. So what we'll do is we'll uh, simply create a polygon sphere. We'll set the translate values to zero. And that will be our shoulder, if you will, our shoulder joint. Just going to create a quick upper arm here. Like so, take object and rotate that over to minus 90. We're going to set the translate values to zero. And we're going to pull that guy out. And from our top view, let's scale that down a bit. Right click vertex and pull that out. Okay. We're going to go to object mode. We're going to go to polygons, mesh, and combine. And that is now our upper arm. We're going to hit control D to duplicate. We'll pull that over here. We'll hit R. We'll scale it in somewhat and move it in somewhat. Right click vertex, pull it out a bit more. That will be our lower arm. And then we click the need to create something that looks like a hand, okay? So we'll take another sphere. We'll uh, set the translate values to zero once again. Pull it out like so. Scale it down a bit. And we'll take a simple cube that we will refer to as our hand. And once again, set the translate values to zero. Take that, hit W, move that out to right there. Okay. We're going to combine these two. Mesh combine, that's combined, and that's combined. Fine. All right. Now, in the parenting video, I showed you how to parent the hand to the lower arm and the lower arm to the upper arm and you had to group it and set your pivot points in the right correction and so forth. Now, as you can see here, this pivot point is in the sphere, so that's good. So is this one. This one is not, it's over there, right? And even if you go to modify and center pivot, it's still not gonna be in the center of the sphere. Now, the cool thing about joints is that you don't have to do that. The joints will do it for you, right? Now, before we get into rigging the arm, I'll just show you where you can find the joints and what they do, right? So we're going to go to our animation tab. We're going to go to skeleton joint tool and just reset the settings to make sure that it's all clean. And if I start clicking somewhere, for example, right there, and I stop right there, you can see that I now have a joint here and a joint there and a connection between the two. Let's call them bones. Okay. So you have your shoulder joint, you have a bone and you have your elbow joint. Okay, if I click once again, we'll go over there. And once I hit enter, it is now a working piece of um, joints, if you will. Now, if I click on one of these, let's say this one, and I pull on it, you can see that the lower arm is moving with it. If I simply take the joint in the elbow, if you will, you can see the rest is moving as well. And the same over here. Okay. Now, how do we get that joint system into our arm? First of all, we're just going to delete this. Um, you're not going to want to do that in your perspective view because it's going to show up at a location that's not fitting your arm, right? So we're going to move to our top view and we're going to go to skeleton and joint tool. And we're going to simply start by clicking on the center of our shoulder joint once. And I'm going to click over here once again. And I'm going to click over here 
once again. Now you probably think that you can't see anything. Well, if you hit four, you can see that a joint system has been created. Okay, and I'll just show you. There you go. All right. Now, typically the joint system is created on the grid. So if I had my arm a bit higher up, I would see my joint system outside of my arm and I would have to move it up, all right? Now, with that in place, if I hit four and I select this joint and I want to move it, so I hit W, you can see that the arm is not moving with it. So for that reason, we need to um, parent the components of the arm to the joints instead of to each other, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to select the hand, we're going to shift select the first joint, and we're going to hit P on our keyboard. We're then going to select our lower arm, shift select the joint in the lower arm, and hit P on our keyboard. And we're going to select our upper arm, shift select the joint in our upper arm, and hit P on our keyboard. So if you now go to Window and Outliner, there should be a relationship. Okay, I'll just uh, delete the history here. Edit, delete by type. History, there we go. So we got a number of objects here and I'll quickly name them so we can kind of see what we're talking about. So this guy, I'll hit five so we can see it. And that's still old stuff. Edit, delete by type history let's see what the deal is there okay so here's your setup this is um, old history so disregard that okay so we have a polysphere that is linked to joint one up here you can see that relationship this guy is linked to the second joint and this is linked to the third one, okay? So we're just going to name this and I'll call this hand. This one, we'll call it lower arm. And this one, we'll call it upper arm, okay? So the highest level of hierarchy is the upper arm, which makes sense because the upper arm moves the lower arm in the hand, okay? The lower arm is a step lower, but still controls the hand and so forth. And you have this joint relationship, all right? So now, if I go in, and I'll hit four for wireframe mode, so you can see it a bit better. And I take this guy, you can see that it's moving up and down, but the arm is not moving up and down, all right? Now, if you think about it, that makes sense. Because if your wrist is the only thing that's moving, it, your arm cannot go up and down, right? So what can you do with your wrist? You can rotate it, and you can rotate the hand that's connected to it. So if I hit E, I can move my hand like this. I can move my hand like that. Makes sense, right? Control Z to go back, all right? So what happens when I select this guy? Um, I'm going to move my elbow. So what should move with my elbow? Obviously, my wrist and my hand, right? And there you have it. And the cool thing is, like I showed you, you didn't have to move your pivot point. OK, Control Z. Now, if we take the top one, what can you do with your shoulder? You can move your arm down or you can move it left to right. So that's kind of all there's to it. It's based on where your joints are and how you can move them. Now, you probably wouldn't be able to move your shoulder like this, or you would have some sort of, you know, a problem. Um, so in one of the next videos, I will tell you how you can restrict the movement of joints. For example, this guy, you know, you can make this movement, but most people can't do this, right? So I will teach you how to put limitations on the movement of the joints. And I will also explain how to create controls so that you can control your animated character uh, when animating, okay? And we'll use NURB, NURB curves for that. 
All right, so that's a little bit about joints. Again, this is still fairly basic, but hopefully it was helpful nevertheless. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'd love to help if I can. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time. Bye.